Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Today we got a game on the Fields of Isis. Now this is a classic map that everybody has seen, so I'm not going to bother introducing it or its intricacies. The only thing that I can say is that sometimes it devolves into a turtle war. So this is going to be probably a more relaxing paced game. But I'm going to go ahead and cast it. It is a 1400 and 1400 and a 900 and 800 so one average Joe one low ranking player and they're on opposite team so well balanced all the way around uh, the players are on the left hand side Archon as Cybern and a UEF choice for flexible then on the right we've got Mr. Reaper also going UEF and then another UEF for double D eight nine four um, so yes three UEFs one Cybern Interesting, not a whole lot of faction variety. We will go ahead and bump the speed up on this one just so we can get through this a slight bit quicker. Um, Archon is going to go for quadruple land, no air in the works, and a lot of forward thinking engineers kind of lagging behind on getting his engineers started. I would be reclaiming aggressively if I were him because he isn't going to end up mass stalling eventually with as few mass extractors as he has built. He is only expanding with one engineer on these pgens and stuff and pushing his comm out to front, which is a good thing, but seems like an awfully slow start to me. You see everybody else already has double his income, although he is sitting on a roughly even amount of power to the purple guy on the other team. Ironically, the 900s are outpacing the 1400s, but I think that will change very, very quickly. Flexible pushing his ACU up to the front, stopping to build a mass extractor on the way. And he is going to be throwing up two air factories right off the bat. That is going to be the air assist player. Reaper going quadruple land and then air factory for double E884. I like saying that name. It is a fun one to say, but eventually I'm sure I will get tired of pronouncing the whole thing. And I'll probably just go to calling him double E. He is going to bite into the mass first, which is a beautiful thing to watch. You always want to suck up that yummy, yummy mass. Interesting tidbit, which I did not learn until relatively recently, you actually gain the same amount of mass per tick whether you're reclaiming T2, T1, or T3. So it is the time you spend reclaiming, not the actual target that you reclaim. And Double D really should have gone walls first because that point defense is dead as a doornail and he really didn't gain anything from trying to build it. Even the wreck is gone. Not a cool situation. He's going to cross over the mid and try to reclaim stuff on the other side and then backtrack and reclaim his own stuff, which is typically how you get more reclaim than the other guy. We got a T1 bomber coming out. Always a good early aggression tool and a T1 bomber answering from pink, which is actually kind of cool. We got a 1400 and an 800 mirroring each other. Actually a 900, not an 800. So this bomber is going to head across here and probably nail these P-Gens and the three engineers that are building them. And here comes the bomb and one death. That was actually a nice little dodge on the part of Archon. Well done, my good sir. Well done. Um, and where did the yellow bomber or the other bomber go? I think it was killed by interceptors and I did not see what was killed. Let's see, a couple of engineers, yeah, actually a good amount, five engineers it looks like, judging from the wrecks. Continual damage being dealt on the bottom end. Something you need to remember, it is kind of counterintuitive, but it's always your first instinct to shoot at the ACU. Well, not for the higher rank players, but for lower rank and myself included, a lot of times I will instinctively go after the ACU. When there's ACU and units, you want to shoot the units not the ACU, because if you're shooting the ACU, you're preserving 100% of the damage potential of the other team. You're not reducing the incoming damage at all. You're only trying to reduce the health on the tankiest unit in the T1 or T2 phase. The ACU is the hardest thing to kill in that phase. phase. The single hardest thing to kill, rather, I should say. But if you're attacking the other units, Every two or three shots, you're removing damage potential from the group that your opponent has. 
and that is what allows you to survive situations. The ACU is going to hit you regardless, but take the extra second to target a tank, get your ACU started shooting at units and not the other ACU, and it will do a whole lot for your survivability. It is well worth it, and a good place to start with that is a well-placed overcharge. The overcharge will reset the targeting on your ACU, and it's a good excuse to break away because it will let you nail a small group of units in a beautiful manner. So, oh, that that could be taken out of context. <laughs> um, this took some damage. Um, looks like a bomber that did not quite get enough damage laid down to actually kill the things. So there's some anti-air online down there. Looks like Reaper is just going to chill out with his T1 commander there. He is going for a T2 land factory, but very close to the front. Um, Flexible already has a T2 air factory, which is pumping out units left and right, Mongeese namely. And it is a little bit further back, which is actually a good thing. You don't want your T2 factory all the way in the back, but you do want it out of easy sniping range and where it won't get run over if you don't have quite enough units to protect the front line. That is a terrible, terrible thing to lose, and I believe that is a gun upgrade. Nicely done, flexible, getting that, um, getting that out in a very timely manner. And he's going to push up with his Mongeese behind his ACU for the awesome kiting ability that they have. Archon pushing double D on the north side. But he's got three triads down. I would just start building T1 point defense if I were him. Archon is going to die. I just know it. Oh my word. Triads focus fired on the ACU. 23, 19, 17, 7, and boom! That is a high rank player eliminated. Oh, good. Ugh. Isis can go so badly so quickly. Ugh. But Flexible looks like he's about to pull a kill on Mr. Reaper. Mr. Reaper has gotten himself tangled up in a tanky situation. Those Mongeese just have so much DPS for the T2 unit. They are going to be wailing on... Ah, I was about to say wailing on the ACU, but they're actually prioritizing other tanks, which is not a bad thing. ACU with the gun upgrade is going to finish off Reaper, but there's a veterancy. And still going to go down. Just too much damage coming in. Kaboom! That is the end. And he's going to try to give his base, but I think the base is still going to die. Um, the no share rule. Yep, there it is. No sharing allowed. All right. Yes, I see the benefit of putting the upgraded land factory at the base. Thanks. That is a good example of learning from a game. Pink was able to kill off that T2 factory at the front with his gun comm and the mobile missile launchers played a large part in that. Sorry if I wasn't completely focused on it, but that's what happened. And once the T2 factory was down, that was all of his mass investment. Mr. Reaper didn't have anything left to defend himself with and then just got swept off his feet by all of those tanks. So now we have a 1400 versus a very capable 1900. One versus one, it is a race to reclaim the base. Uh, got engineers going down, building mass extractors, reclaiming all kinds of mass, and hopefully he can tech up all of his mexes even more than they already are. Still got a couple of T1 and needs to build storages, so now is the time for teching. And early T3 would be a good option here, actually. Both players are UEF. The early Percivals would give a distinct advantage over the striker spam. I'm sorry, pillar spam that is inevitably going to happen once the Percivals come on the field. Those are pretty much uh, obsolete. Not really going to do anything else for you. Flexible pulling a T2 upgrade, maybe? I think? Possibly? Perhaps? Yes, T2 upgrade. Nice to see. And he is still building Mongeese. Now, in this situation, his Mongeese usage was relatively decent. You don't want to build Mongeese as mainline tanks unless you have a lot, excuse me, a lot of extra time to micro them. Because Mongeese have such low HP that it presents major issues in survivability terms. So you're going to want to kite at maximum distance as much as you possibly can. Let's take a look at Double E's commander. I believe he does have the gun upgrade. Yes, he does. That's Guncom versus Guncom. T2 versus T2. Collision. 
the AoE of the Mongeese is a bonus, but that was a beautiful overcharge over there, killing off a couple of those Mongeese right off the bat. Flexible's gonna get tied up in these pillars. Gotta overcharge those. Nice prioritization of units, and he is going to come out on top. Flexible able to overcharge that group, and he's in the clear health-wise. Far, far more health than DD, thanks to that veteran seat. Actually, not as much as I thought. 1,800 over here, trying to bring a shield to himself. 1,600 health versus 1,200. More pillars floating in. Um, yeah, Mongeese are not going to cut it versus pillars. Now that the pillar spam has begun in earnest and we got several factories pumping them out, that guncom is going to be responsible for killing the pillars as the uh, Mongeese will not suffice. So he needs to be thinking about either building pillars or more tech. I know the assault bots are cool. I know they're fun to use, but I'm telling you, it just doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't happen that way. And he needs to back the hell off. Got T2 tanks moving in, taking a lot of damage under 9k health, both of them. This, oh, I would hate to see a mutual. That would just suck for everyone. We got 10k, another veteran C, I I think. No, no, it's not. Never mind. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. And 10k on double E. Back and forth and back and forth among the wreckage of the battle. Somebody needs to get some engineers out here. I'm telling you, there is a ton of mass right there. Flexible is overflowing mass. No, no, he committed the mortal sin. Ah, Double D actually isn't using all of his mass either, but he does have some more T1 mass extractors to upgrade. See, we've got all of these mass extractors. All it takes is selecting four of them and hitting the upgrade button and it would balance the mass. Flexible is over investing micro time into his ACU, although now he's not. Yeah. Um, when you get a little too tied up in your unit micro and neglect your home base, that is what loses games, my goodness. Double D climbing 30 in the lead on mass income, flexible ahead on power, but still overflowing 20 mass. Ugh, not good. Flexible would be so much better off if he just was using all of his mass. He has so much potential. He has the build power. He has the power. He needs to throw down a T3 upgrade. That is exactly what he needs to do. He has enough storage in his bar with enough positive eco to throw up that T3 upgrade ASAP with no stalling and get Percival's on the freaking field. That is what would save him in this situation if he can get T3 online before the 1400 player. He actually stands a chance of winning it. But he does have T2 air online. That is a good thing, but he needs to be building either, ah, there's Flak. I was about to say either Flak or his own Interceptors. There's the Flak. That is capable of killing all of the other Interceptors off, and that's a shield upgrade. Oh, if that finishes, that is going to be the end of Flexible, because this comm is going to be unkillable. Excellent. Pausing there. Pausing before he power stalled in order to fill his bar up. He needs to unpause it now, but uh, hey, you only got so many APM. Gotta kind of dole them out where you need them. Gonna use the mass again, and or the power again, and then pause. So he's getting about uh, 8 or 9% every time he uses up his storage with that upgrade. Still not getting upgrades on these T1 mass extractors. Flexible is finally not overflowing mass. Hallelujah! What is he doing that is using that much? Not entirely sure. But he changed something, that's for sure. Ah, building a T2 power here and then shielding. So he is going to turtle up. All right. Settle down once again. I am predicting that DD is going to win this hands down because he has roughly double the eco of flexible at this point. Um, I don't want to say too much bad about flexible because he is significantly lower ranked and he is obviously still learning some things, but I will stress, I do hope that he watches this cast. I will heavily stress that he needs to really focus on using all of his mass because I wasn't kidding about that being a mortal sin. It pains me in my very soul to see mass overflowing that bar. And I know a couple of you have watched me play and you're like, but Brink, you overflow sometimes too. I will readily admit that I have overflowed before. And I have power stalled before. 
But, well, power stalling I can be kind of bad about sometimes because I always play in team games and sometimes I try to use my team as a crutch. But um, mass overflow, as far as that goes, I do as little as I possibly can and I try when I see that mass overflow blip just it doesn't matter what it is build something anything use it the worst thing you can possibly do is waste it so we got a lot of Janus's up here uh, one of them is going to get a little bit uh, independent and go off on its own against all of these flak and shields which is bad this is actually a really good mix for double D he does not have an excessive amount of pillars. The majority, I would say a third of this is shields and flak. But when you have a commander this freaking strong, you don't need a whole lot of combat units. Your commander is the Rambo Com. You're just going to want a lot of support units. You're going to want shields to throw in front of your ACU. You're going to want flak to prevent the inevitable air snipe that will come at you. And so many T1 point defense. Holy hell. You need to spread these out, bud. They're all within area of effect of each other. Two overcharges and all, almost all of those are dead. Ugh. So much damage potential in those pillars in the commander. That is a power stall, my friends. That is not what you want to have happening when you're on an aggressive push like that. 297 power. He can't maintain overcharge. The shield is up, though. And all that flak is just going to wreck those bombers. That saved Didi's life. He just barely got that shield back up off that power stall and those things came in. Holy cow. That was almost a kill. That was so close. Flexible almost pulled that out. We are seeing Percival's roll up. That was a heavy handed upgrade there. Just the wrong T3 factory. I was looking at this one. Percival's do outrange the gun comm still, but he needs to separate his Percival's from all other units at all times so that he can't have multiple ones overcharged at the same time, and he is going to push back against Double D. He's got almost as much actual ACU health, and that shield is starting to look a little bit weak on that ACU. It's not totally gone. But it will be after these... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't fight air with Janus's. That's bad. Attack. Use the ground damage. They can't keep up with interceptors. You gotta build interceptors to fight interceptors. Need a flak. If you can get a flak up... I am rooting so hard for flexible. I love underdogs. I see so many ways. If you just tweaked one little thing, yellow would be dead. And yellow is severely overextending himself. Just need to straight up push the comm with those bombers. If he puts his ACU on that ACU with overcharges, starts doing all the damage he can. He's got two Percivals and some Mongeese, needs to kite out. Don't walk the Percival into the ACU, gotta back up. Shield is down, repeat, shield is down. 1600 health, he's 400 under. That was a critical mistake from Didi getting extended this far out without a support units. Although they are coming in. Also, it hurts my eyes to see that much reclaim not being taken advantage of. Flexible needs to, there we go, overcharge the shields, overcharge the units. Mongeese moving in once again on that commander. Percival firing brutal hits. That alpha is just huge. And get the ACU in between that comm and your... No! If you, can, if you can block the overcharge with your ACU, that actually will let you... It only does 400 damage to your comm, and it keeps your Percival alive. That is an amazing tool that you can use to your advantage. 8K versus 5K. If this Percival can get in range, but there's the shields. Oh, no, 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 no. This is either... 26, there's the shielding, overcharge the shields, come on bud, overcharge the shields, yellow pulling 129 to 80, oh, there's the Janus's, and that is, oh no, the shield was 1% away, oh my goodness, that was so close, I don't think I've ever seen one that was that down to the wire, 2900 health left on that ACU, 
that the shield bar was full like it was about to flick on and that would be another 20,000 plus health to burn through flexible would have a hundred percent for sure lost that and the Janus and the commander on commander in to save the day Percival's definitely did not help either I'm glad he took my advice which he could not hear because it's after the game actually happened but that he went t3 the t3 made that game right there we got Percival saving up in the back for yellow but they just weren't at the front which would have helped him out a whole lot Ugh. so Mistakes were made that game. I hope nobody thinks that I was too harsh on these guys. I'm just seeing, I see so much that can be done in a game like this. And I wish that I could give people, I mean, anyway, that is, that is my nature is to try to help people and assist people and tell them what they can be doing to improve, which hopefully doesn't get too terribly annoying for people who are in game with me, but I will just keep right on doing what I'm doing because hopefully I'll improve people along the way. All right, now that everybody is psyched up from that down to the wire battle, that is the end of this game, end of this cast. This is one of six AFK casts that I'm doing while I am off. I am either honeymooning or traveling down to the wedding or in the wedding or something else, depending on when this cast actually releases. I do not know when that will be. I'll decide that after I record all six so I can get the content straightened out. Uh, but Rest assured, I am doing exciting and fun things away from the computer for a while and uh, getting to know my either fiancé or now wife better, depending on when this is playing. I really do appreciate your thoughts and all of your support that you've shown me. A lot of people have been commenting about me getting married. Yes, you will get to see my beautiful bride when we get back. She's actually in a couple of bit of videos if you want to see her at the end of the video titled Bell Invasion, um, B E. L L E invasion. You can actually see her with me here at my apartment and um, yeah, you'll get to see her more once I get back. So without further ado, I'm not going to talk your ear off anymore. I will see you guys in the next video. As always, thank you so much for watching.